Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to focus on the dot product and its applications. Let's first start off with what the dot product is. The dot product is just simply a calculation that we apply to vectors. Now, this simple calculation is applied to various vector formulas, two of which we'll cover in this video. Here's basically it. Let's say you have vector u and vector v, and these are the given components. Vector u is x1, y1, and vector v is x2, y2. Well, the formula for the dot product is just simply the product of these two values here and the product of these two values then added together. The solution will end up giving you just one number, and that number will be positive or negative or zero, but it will not be a vector per se, so you're not looking for a new vector at all. Let's say, for example, that we were given vectors u and v, with u being 10, 9, and v being negative 4, 2. Determine the dot product. Again, as stated before, what you would do is you would multiply your x values, 10 and negative 4, then multiply your y values, 9 and 2. Just add them up, and that's it. It should be noted that if the dot product ends up being 0, then those two vectors are orthogonal. By orthogonal, we mean that they form a 90 degree angle. So if you were given a problem like this, if vector 4 comma negative 3 and 7k are orthogonal vectors, then the value of k is what? By the way, you might notice I'm using slightly different uh, notation here. Before negative 3 is the same thing as writing as 4i minus 3j. A lot of times vectors are written with arrows at the ends instead to denote the location of the arrow head. So back to dot product, what we do is, again, we multiply those x values first, which in this case would be 4 and 7, and then we multiply those y values second. Now, since we already know that they are orthogonal, we're just going to set it equal to 0. And what this becomes now is just a simple algebraic problem. This is 28, so just go ahead and subtract 28 from both sides, then divide by negative 3. So that would be our solution to k, and that would be it. All right, let's go back to our original vectors of u and v. Let's add on a vector w, and this time let's determine the dot product of u and the sum of vector v and w together. What you could do is you could apply the same basic, I, ba same basic principles behind order of operations in that you would do parentheses first, and then multiply afterwards. So vector v and w would be this one plus this one. And then once you get that solution, so once we get this sum, we can then do the dot product for vector u. So that means multiplying the 10 and the 9 with the negative 1 and the 7 in that respective order to give us that solution. It should be noted that you could have treated this like distributive property in that you could have just simply taken the dot product of u together with v and then the dot product of u together with w and then added those two solutions together. Either way would work. Let's move on to one application of the dot product. Let's do the law of cosines for vectors. Let's say that we were to determine the angle between vectors u and v. And by the way, we're using the same two values here for vector u and vector v. The law of cosines formula, I'm not going to derive it for you for vectors, but it does pretty much come from the ordinary law of cosines. So it is the dot product on top divided by the magnitudes of the two vectors on the bottom. Now, we've already done the dot product of these two, so let's go ahead and just work that out. This, remember, is going to be negative 22, but in case you forgot, it's 10 times negative 4 for this first value, then 9 times 2 for this second value. On the bottom, you want the magnitudes, which, remember, echoes the Pythagorean theorem. For vector u, you would take 10 and square it, and 9 and square it, 
After that you would add, then square root. Same goes for vector v. As stated before, we know the top is negative 22. On the bottom, once you get these two values here, you can just simply take that answer, which will end up being 181, and this answer, which will end up being 20, and then multiply them together under one radical. So then with a little bit of calculator work, taking negative 22 and dividing by this quantity, what we get is negative 0 0.3567. Round it off, of course. So what we want essentially is to determine the arc cosine of this value, which yields 111 degrees. So that's the angle in which those two vectors, if graphed from position, would form. Now let's revisit orthogonal. Why is it that if the dot product is zero, that the vectors are orthogonal? Well, if you understand the idea behind cosine and its graph, you would know that if the dot product here is zero, then the whole thing becomes zero. So then you would know that at what angle the cosine is zero, and that would be 90 degrees. To expand a bit more on this idea, let's kind of refer to the cosine graph. This is it here, the first period, you may note that the cosine graph starts from up here at 1 and then altern, uh, oscillates between z uh, negative 1 and 1. At 90 degrees, you'll notice that it's at 0. You should also know that for any acute angle less than 90 degrees, the cosine is up here where it's positive. Down here, it is negative. That should tell you something about the dot product and its ability to predict the value. If the dot product is 0, yes, the vectors are orthogonal. If the dot product here ends up being positive, then you know that the angle lies between 0 and 90. In other words, it's acute. If the dot product ends up being negative, then you know that the angle is obtuse. You're beautiful, and that's for sure. We're going to finish off with another application of the dot product called projections. Here's the basic idea of a projection. Let's say you got two vectors here, vector v and vector w you want to project one vector on top of another. And the way that works is this. Let's say that this vector here represents the ground. If you have the sun out here, what's going to happen is, is that any object that's sticking out of the ground is going to form a shadow. That shadow is what you're looking for, essentially. That is your projection. So what will happen is this vector here, it'll be however long or short it is. What really matters is its direction. Then what you do is you want to figure out exactly how long the projection is going to be. Therefore, the formula for the projection of V onto W is this. Now, this looks a little muddled here. So what you really ought to focus on is the idea that you're just simply calculating here a scalar. And then once you figure out that scalar, you're going to multiply it to the components of W. Remember that W and the projection are going in the same direction. So all you're doing here is shortening it or lengthening the magnitude. And the way you do that is through scalar multiplication. So your calculation basically just goes into determining what that scalar is. And then when you're done, you just make w that much bigger or smaller. So let's say, given these two particular vectors, we want to determine the projection of v onto w. Let's first start off by writing our formula first. There it is. And actually, to make this easier, let's just focus on this part here. Let's go ahead and determine the dot products of v and w. That's the dot product of v and w. Now let's do the dot product for w with itself. That basically means you're going to multiply negative 2 times negative 2, and then 6 times 6. Essentially, it's the magnitude squared. On top, you'll wind up with 20. On the bottom, you'll get 40. So 20 over 40 is the scalar we're looking for, or in other words, 1 half. So here's what we want to do with 1 half. We want to take 1 half and then multiply it by vector w. So if you take it and distribute it to the components of w, what you'll get is negative i plus 3j. That's essentially it. To kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about visually, this is what it is. 
Here's vector v where the arrowhead's pointing at 2 comma 4. So originally it was 2y plus 4j. And then here's vector w. Arrowhead located at negative 2 comma 6. Since v is being projected onto w, it's almost as if the sunlight's coming from over here. So that means that the, cat, the, the shadow being cast would essentially get up to about this point right here. So that was our projection, negative i plus 3j, where the coordinate here is located at negative 1 comma 3. Now when it comes to vectors, we don't talk about vectors being exactly the same, like you would have lines one on top of the other, you would call them the same line. But for vectors, we wouldn't call them that. Even if they were in the same direction and the same magnitude, we would state that the vectors are parallel. The reason why is because unlike lines, Vectors do not have to be at the position here at 0, 0. They can be, say, over here, for example. But you can tell that they keep and maintain the same slope. To finish this off, let's last talk about decomposition. You might be asked to decompose a vector into two orthogonal vectors. In other words, two vectors that form a 90 degree angle. Keep in mind vector addition. If this were, say, your vector v, you could rewrite vector v as the sum of two other vectors, like these two put together. As long as you connect head to tail, you're fine. These two work as well. However, if you were to just simply use the projection, and if you had already calculated the projection, this could actually be a simpler problem. Since you want them to be orthogonal, the projection has the benefit of actually being one of the two orthogonal vectors. So if you are given something like this, decompose vector v into two vectors, where v1 is parallel to w and v2 is orthogonal to w, well, the one that's parallel is essentially the projection. So you would just determine the projection first. Typically, those things go together. They will ask you to determine the projection and then decompose it into two vectors. So one of them's already known. So what about the other one? If we could draw a picture, it would be easy. You can just simply do this and then figure it out that way. This here would be it, which if you drawn from position, would be located at 3, 1. Unfortunately, we don't typically get answers like this for a projection. They tend to be fractions, and that's difficult to graph. Therefore, we'll want to calculate it. Remember vector addition. If you take this first vector, then add it to the second one, this would be the result. So, since we already know the first one is the projection, the question is, how do you get the second one? Well, you would do it just using the idea of basic algebraic expressions in that you would just subtract from both sides. So, your other vector would just simply be v minus v1. And remember, v1 is just the projection. So that's really your formula. So let's go ahead and do this. We already have v1. This is it here. So that's v2 is equal to v minus the projection, which is this, which becomes this. So that's your solution. Therefore, you would write these as your solutions when you're done.